greetings, folks. I want to welcome you to another Washington County Public Affairs Forum where we've got Kimberly Howard speaking today from the Oregon Cultural Trust. She's a manager there. In addition to just being a manager at the Oregon Cultural Trust, she's an actress and uh, uh, very well connected in the community. I've uh, come to learn with some of the attendees here. A couple quick reminders. Uh, first, uh, do everybody a favor, turn your cell phone off, please. Uh, I'd also like to ask if you're going to ask a question. We've done a little change over here at the audience microphone. We've got a clip there, so you can just squeeze the clip and hold the mic to your face so we can hear you better. Uh, please feel free to do that. Uh, I've got some upcoming programs I'd like to uh, remind you about. Next week, we've got Brad Avakian, Oregon Bully Commissioner. And then after that, we're going to take a two-week hiatus and not convene to respect the holidays. Early next year, we have NIWA, the Northwest Independent Writers Association. And as I've told you before, they are very much a high energy group. And I think that you may want to take the rest of the day off because they're very, <laughs> they're very vibrant and they bring a lot of excitement to the community, which is what I think uh, the forum is really going to enjoy. On the 13th, we are going to have uh, Eva Calcano and Doug Hoy with the Aloha Library. Uh, Eva is the... Uh, 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 also with uh, something other than the Aloha Library. She's uh, um, uh, basically in charge of uh, Washington County's Cooperative Library Services and an amazing job she does with that. And uh, just a quick sidebar, the library has uh, loaned us the video camera that uh, we use to put this on television. And that saved the forum a tremendous amount of money. It's allowed the forum to do some neat things. So it's uh, really want to thank the LO Library for what they're doing because it's had impacts in the rest of the community. Uh, further on, uh, we're going to have uh, some more arts programming. The Westside Cultural Alliance is going to be here on the 20th. And then uh, uh, Rob Herman, Washington County District Attorney, is going to round out January on the 27th. TVC TV's Kevin Howard will be here on February 3rd. And on February 10th is the last confirmed booking we've got. Uh, or excuse me, Helping Empower Youth will present either on the 10th or the 17th of February. Uh, moving on, I'd like to just uh, wind down my opening remarks with a plea to the forum members in attendance and those people on TV. The Washington County Public Affairs Forum is always looking for volunteers. If you'd like to serve on our board and if you'd like to serve the forum without being on the board, we have opportunities for you. Please see me or send an email to president at washingtoncountyforum.org. What I'd like to ask you to do is now please put your hands together for a re really remarkable speaker that we're going to enjoy here shortly, and that's Kimberly Howard. Folks, if you'll just give me a moment to get this set up, we'll get going. What you should be able to do is just click on um, the left change mouse. The slide. Yeah, and then if you need to go back, just left arrow, okay. left arrow here. And then one last thing I'm going to do is just a perfect place so that we okay. all of you. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So don't move from this spot. Yeah, and then I'm going to be kind of a jerk and say, how about some applause one more time for Kimberly Howard? Thank you. So I'm going to start out with, um, with a question. What is the Cultural Trust? How many of you have heard of the Oregon Cultural Trust? Show of hands. Great. So for many of you, this is going to be your yearly reminder. Um, and maybe you'll learn a little bit more um, details about the Cultural Trust than you already know. And for those of you who don't know, this will be the first time you hear about it and hopefully not the last. So the Cultural Trust, as it says on the slide, enriches the lives of all Oregonians by increasing access to and and um, encouraging participation in culture. We have defined, the state of Oregon has defined culture as our arts, our heritage, and our humanities. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. So the Cultural Trust supports, supports projects and programs across the state that fuel our economy, that inspire our children, and that make Oregon a great place to live, work, and play. The Cultural Trust makes us proud to be Oregonians. 
Through the cultural trust, the Oregonians are setting a direction for culture in Oregon. So 11 years ago, citizens and community members just like you and me got together and said, you know what, Oregon really needs to have a sustainable fund to support arts heritage and humanities in perpetuity. Not just when we have a boon economy, but also when we have a rainy day. Um, and so this group of, of Oregonians went around, um, at that point, it was uh, the first administration of Governor Kitzhaber. He elected a, a task force or put together a task force that had focus groups and committee meetings and talked to Oregonians statewide and said, how can we create the sustainable fund? And from these conversations was created the Cultural Trust. It is a unique organization. It is unique in the country. There is no other state in the country that has this cultural tax credit, which is the way that we fuel the arts, heritage, and humanities funding that we're talking about. The trust wanted to make sure that it was open to all. In this way, not just those of us who have a million dollars to give away, um, because I know how many of you are in this room have a million dollars to give away every year to our museums and to our historical societies and to the ballet and to art for arts education. But in fact, every single one of us can be part of making a difference with the Oregon Cultural Trust because of our unique tax credit. And then it was also said that it would be for everyone. It would not be for the just the big organizations, the, the what I like to call the SOBs, the symphony, opera, ballet. <laughs> but also for, as I said, the small historical societies, for the preservation work that's being done in our communities, for our libraries, for the organizations that touch our lives every single day. And in that way, the Oregon Cultural Trust goes to every single county and six of the federally recognized tribes in Oregon as well. And as I said, anyone can participate. This one-of-a-kind tax credit makes it a win-win for donors, for nonprofits, and for Oregon statewide. Now in a minute I'm going to show you a slide, or actually a series of slides, so it shows how this win-win situation is a benefit for you. And here we go. The first thing you do to make the cultural trust a win-win situation for you as an Oregonian for all the organizations that this cultural trust supports is to give a donation to your favorite cultural nonprofit. And of course we have a list of over 1,300 of them on our website at culturaltrust.org. The second step is that you add up all of those donate donations, because there's not just one organization that touches your lives, as I've already mentioned, several types of organizations that we support. There's probably several, so you add those up. Um, on the table, um, in various places, is some paperwork, yes, some collateral, or as I like to call my visual aid. And in there, one of them is a bookmark. And on the back of that bookmark, you can actually list the organizations that you've given to to help keep track. The third step is to, now that you have a total, is to make a total gift in the same amount to the Oregon Cultural Trust. So what that looks like is, for example, I'm not saying you have to do it exactly this way, but let's say you give $100 to Bag and Baggage Theater. They're here in Hillsboro. And then you call me up on Tuesday, and you give the Cultural Trust another $100. Now, before you bulk and say, Kimberly, I'm out of pocket $200, what's happening? When you do your taxes, come April, or if you do it before April, and you add up your deductions, and then you get the 100% tax credit for the dollar amount that you gave to the Cultural Trust, which remember was $100, your $200 investment will have only cost you $41. Another piece of paperwork that you have, visual aid, is a tax chart that shows what I'm talking about. And of course, you can add zeros as necessary, up to five thousand, up to a thousand dollars per household, five hundred dollars per individual. And that is the step four: writing off your donations as both deductions and then getting that hundred percent tax credit. So in 11 years, this has enabled, this very unique tax credit program has enabled Oregonians to donate over $28 million to the trust. Of that $28 million, we have about $14 million that we have distributed directly in grants, as I said, to every county tribe in Oregon in three different pots. The County Cultural Coalition, which we're gonna hear a little bit about today. Then the second pot is our cultural development grants. And the third pot is our partner grants that go to our cultural state partners, which include the Oregon Historical Society, Oregon Heritage Programs, State Historic Preservation Office, Oregon Arts Commission, and I think I got everybody, and Oregon Humanities. Thank you, Eva. 
That altogether has been over a thousand plus grants that are directly distributed from the cultural trust. Now the really, really interesting part, again, about the cultural trust, an another radical and unique aspect of it, is that we have over $20 million in a permanent fund. That is because we are not just spending the money, we are also stewards of this, these donation dollars. So that 58 cents on every dollar that is contributed goes back into the fund. And I actually want to point out that it's not just $58 and every dollar earned from contributions, but also every dollar that's earned in the permanent fund. So at the end of the year, we look at total dollars, both contributed and investment earning results, and then we take 58 cents on every dollar and put it right, some of it goes right back into the fund and the rest of it gets distributed. Um, the 35 cents is distributed as grants and then 7 cents on every dollar is part of operations. That's a very lean operating budget. The permanent fund, again, as these volunteers and, and community members thought about this, they really, they really visioned a $200 million permanent fund for arts and heritage and humanities, which in perpetuity we, would mean about $10 million a year in investment earnings that would go out in those grants. Now we're at 20 million now, so we've got a little ways to go. But to give you a perspective, I think we give the Was Cultural Co uh, Coalition of Washington County about $30,000 a year, 40, $40,000 a year. So if they got $40,000 a year when we are raising about 3 million and our fund is only at 20 million, think about it in terms of like basically 10 times that much, right? So 10 times, 40,000 would be $400,000. So when we get that permanent fund to $200 million, that is $400,000 a year that would come directly to Washington County for arts, heritage, and humanities nonprofits. So that's the goal we're trying to hit. Right now we're at 24,000 or so Oregonians that have given to the Cultural Trust. And as we all know, there's about 3.9 million Oregonians. Now not, not all of those are tax-paying Oregonians. So even if we said, let's get 3 million Oregonians to give to the Cultural Trust. And if 3 million Oregonians give to the Cultural Trust $10 a year, that's not even talking about those who can give up to the max then we're talking about $30 million a year. We're going to get to that $200 million in no time. And then we just sit back and watch the interest rolling in. As I already mentioned, that all of these grants go to support arts, heritage, and humanities. We're talking about jobs. We're talking about money. We're also talking about arts education. This year, as we move forward, we're very excited because the tax credit was renewed for another six years. That's through 2020. Then that doesn't mean that at 2020 we're going to be done. I'm sure that by the time we get to 2018, we'll start talking about renewing that tax credit for another 20 years, excuse me, another six years, unless by some magic, all of you tell 10 friends who then tell 10 friends who then tell 10 friends about the goodness of the cultural trust and we get to that 200 million before we get to 2020. I'm gonna hold out for that. Now as we move forward, the other thing we did was this year, we cre last year we created a special pioneer circle. This was asking donors who could give above the tax credit, not a lot above the tax credit, but $500 above the tax credit or $1,500 above the tax credit, which they would still get a tax deduction for and then they would be eligible to become a pioneer circle member. This was, it has been an exciting program. We have over 120 members, which makes up basically 50 or 60 households and businesses. Um, and they are listed on our website as are the benefits for being a Pioneer Circle member. The other thing we did what last year was I talked about those investment results as being part of the dollars earned for the cultural trust. I'm going to give you some more statistics. Um, since you're public affairs forum people, numbers I'm sure are really helpful to you. Um, before we, um, was it last year, the Treasury's office asked us if we wanted to take our, I think at that point it was a little over $10 million, and invest it more deeply. We had been just in an interest-bearing checking account, basically. And as we all know, after the recession, the interest rates on that were, what, 0.001% or something like that, maybe a little better than that. And so in 2012, our interest, or excuse me, our, yes, our interest earned was $80,000. In 2013, after investing in an intermediate term pool with the Secretary of Treasury's office, our investment results were over 200,000. That was a 140% increase 
on the money earned just that was sitting in the permanent fund. So this was one of those things that we looked at as a way to grow that 20 million to 200 million faster. So we talked a little bit about the things that the cultural trust does. And I talk in aggregate, right? I sort of said arts, heritage, and humanities. I talked a little bit about historical societies and libraries. But I think one of the biggest impacts the cultural trust has had has been in education, in particular with young people. Over 50% of the grants that our county coalitions are making every year go towards some form of what they tag as youth which is basically an arts education. So that's in-school programming, after-school program, Saturday programming, anything that has to do with engaging our youth in arts, heritage, and humanities statewide. Um, we have several programs here. Um, both Bag and Baggage has a special program with the high school program with the high school students, and Broadway Rose also here in Washington County has a wonderful student internship program. In addition to that, the cultural trust impacts the economy. Last year, we did a research project with Echo Northwest and found that over 19,000 cultural sector jobs are created by the 1,300 nonprofits that the cultural trust uh, supports. Now, to give you a comparison, 19, there are 19,000 legal sector jobs in the state of Oregon. And there are a lot of, of attorneys and law firms in Oregon. So if that helps you see the impact that culture has on the economy, 19,000 jobs are created by our cultural nonprofits. We're talking about over $200 million in income. A lot of that actually is coming from some of those big organizations that I talked about, the SOBs, the Symphony Opera, the Ballet, and I would add the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, which is one of the biggest cultural employers in the state of Oregon, and their employees put back in, in um, income tax um, over a million dollars a year into our, back into our economy. Um, if we, talk, we add up these cultural sector jobs, though, we're talking about over $57 million in state and local taxes and fees. So what does the cultural trust look like in the metro area? And I mean, when I think about the metro area, I think of Washington County, Clackamas County, Multnomah County. We've invested over $2.7 million in the metro area since 2003 in those grant, three grant programs that I um, have already talked about. And when I say invested, and I, when I say we, I mean we Oregonians who have contributed to the Oregon Cultural Trust. That looks like uh, over 116 local organ grants to local organizations, not to mention the thousands of grants that the county co coalitions have made in that time. What it looks like this year, in 2014, we're looking at grants in Washington County directly from the cultural development grants to Bag and Baggage, to the Beaverton Arts Foundation, and of course the Cultural Coalition of Washington County. So four things that you can do when you think about the Oregon Cultural Trust. Of course, you can give to the Cultural Trust, and it actually says on the slide today, although I heard in a recent marketing thing I shouldn't read the slides to you, so you can read that yourself. <laughs> You can participate in cultural activities. Uh, this year we started a uh, field guide, uh, an Oregon culture field guide, and it's basically a website that has a list of about 125 evergreen activities from climbing the steps at the Astoria Column to um, attending um, Happy Canyon at the Pendleton Roundup um, to checking out a book at the local library and everything in between. And we've said, hey Oregonians, why not take a look at this list and make a life list? And then you can check it off. These are things in, that you have always wanted to do in arts, heritage, and humanities in Oregon, and they are presented and presented protected by these 1,300 cultural nonprofits. So when you get a chance later today, check out OregonCultureFieldGuide.org on, oops, on your smartphone or on your computer, or you can ask someone to print it out for you and have a hard copy. And the other thing that you can do, and, and as public affairs people, you know how important it is to thank your public officials for their contribution in supporting um, public policy like the cultural trust, which is unique again in the country. Um, in the beginning, we talked a lot about it being the same as the bottle bill and the vote by mail as being radical legislation that, the, that Oregon sort of is showing to the rest of the community of, of the, the nation, I should say, as being a good idea for taking care of our communities. And thanking them, because in 2020, the legislature said yes, again, to the cultural tax credit, because we Oregonians said this is important. It is enriching our lives. 
And finally, there are volunteer opportunities. I know that here in Washington County, there's a, um, when there is an opening on the Cultural Coalition of Washington County, you can find out about that through the, your, um, the county website. And those volunteer opportunities for the Cultural Coalitions are very, very valuable opportunities. Also, every once in a while, the Cultural Trust likes to show up an event and put out a table. And we love it if we have volunteers from the local community at those tables as well. So those are also opportunities for you. Finally, I'm going to show you um, a video. We have a culture and a landscape that we love and we're proud of in every nook and cranny of this state. It's not just a love for land, but it's a love for who you are and what you are and where you came from. The reason the Oregon Cultural Trust is important to me and to these tribes is culture is the fabric that holds us together as Oregonians. It's what sustains us in our most desperate moments. And it's how we relate to one another through bonds that no one else can share. The arts have that capability of communicating viscerally, visually, emotionally in a way that talking heads and statistics don't. First, you want to just get people to stop and look at the artwork. And then you want to have them stop and think about the problem. We've processed about seven tons of debris into 19 pieces of art. It's just in a 20-mile stretch of beaches. Sometimes you can't wait for those statistics. You have to just show what's going on. We're proud of this little community. We're proud of our museum. It's very important to be able to see skis at, at this museum because that's what made this town in the first place. I think the Cultural Trust is the best thing that happened to Oregon as far as history and, and cultural resources. It's a good thing for this, this community and this museum. It's a great place. When you have such a place that has magic, the truth comes out. Working here, I have a daily affirmation that there is value in my culture, in my identity, in my family. It's about understanding your neighbors better. And we're happy to be that place where people gather around inquiry of culture. Yeah. Very happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Please enjoy it. It's about to be about It's about exploring what people are capable of, looking at the, the, the possibilities of human endeavor. Music, I think, is one of the most effective forms of communication that we've come up with. It transcends cultural barriers, it transcends language barriers, age, uh, taste, you name it, music can conquer it. It's not the Eugene Bach Festival, it's the Oregon Bach Festival. It's, it's for the state and it's really for the country and for the world. The Cultural Trust connects us to the state of Oregon. A library is essential for a community. Access to information is the foundation of a democracy. This is like a, a classroom to me, like going to school. With the trust, it's enabled us to do some things in our collection we haven't had before. All the time, we have to, to read because we are learning. How do you say this uh, word? The Spanish language materials particularly delight me. Week. Week. Oh, semana in Spanish. I think that if people want to have a good understanding of the world they live in, they need to know where they came from, where society came from. Everyone's appreciation of history starts somewhere. Now, did you look down on our ranch? Did you get to see chickens and horses? Yes. Yet? Did you like it? Yes. It's about connecting with people who have lived a hundred years ago. It's about putting yourself in their shoes. And that's part of what the museum does, is learning by doing and creating Oregon citizens that really relish and love that Oregon history. It's beautiful and it's rich, and we have much to take care of.
um, as Bobby Connor said, that last quote, it is beautiful, it is rich, and we have much to take care of. And the Oregon Cultural Trust is that opportunity to do so. Um, I want to take um, a moment to set a, an example, and I want to thank Representative Harker, who's here with us today, um, a member of our Oregon legislative body that helped us um, both start the Cultural Trust and renew the cultural tax credit. So thank you, Representative Harker. And uh, I so we have much to take care of, and this is our cultural trust, this is our organ, this is our arts, heritage, and humanities. These organizations enrich our lives every single day in ways that we sometimes don't even think about, and this is our opportunity to give back. So thank you. Um, and I guess the Cultural Coalition is going to come and talk with you now. I'm Eva Calcano, and I'm the director of the Washington County Cooperative Library Services. And one of the hats I wear for the county is to serve as the liaison to the cultural community in Washington County. And that means being the staff uh, support for the Cultural Coalition of Washington County. And while Kimberly talked about the statewide picture, I'm going to give you just a glimpse of the county picture. As she mentioned, um, trust money is distributed to each county, and so in Washington County, that means the Cultural Coalition. Uh, it was formed in 2005 by the Board of County Commissioners, so there are 15 members, and they're appointed annually by the Board of Commissioners to be the cultural, um, to be the, the givers of money for uh, the cultural community in Washington County. And their primary goal is to distribute funds from the Cultural Trust to locally based arts, heritage, and humanities organizations to support uh, projects and events uh, ar across the county. And on your tables and in the back um, are a couple of handouts for you. One is a list of every grant ever given since 2005. So in the 10 years that, 10 grant cycles that the coalition has distributed funds, they've s distributed over $339,000. Uh, to Washington County organizations. All in little bits. I think the largest was 5000 but sometimes it's $500 or $1,000. Um, and they do this on an annual uh, grant cycle basis. Um, there are 15 members, and I'm delighted to and honored to have the opportunity to work with them because they're a very dedicated group and very enthusiastic about spreading the word about Washington County organizations. The other piece I brought for you is the Washington County Winter Arts Guide, which um, if you subscribe to a Pamplin newspaper, the Beaverton Valley Times, for example, you'll get that inserted in your newspaper, but it's also available uh, at libraries and other places around the community, and it's a quarterly publication that lists activities that are happening um, around the county, and you're welcome to attend any of them. Um, and as Kimberly mentioned, uh, the donate match, get the whole match back. If you're looking for an organization that you want to donate to that you haven't, use this list of grant recipients as a guide to start um, giving locally and then matching to the trust. And I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> I think I have one more slide, and that is if there are any questions that anybody has about the cultural trust, about the cultural coalition, coalition and how we work together. I'm a Bill Kroger, I'm a forum member, so thank you very much for coming in today. It was an interesting presentation. Uh, the question I have is, uh, <clears throat> do you guys uh, provide grants to individual artists? And if so, how does one go about applying to get such a grant? To the coalition? Uh, Washington County Cultural Coalition does not provide uh, grants to individuals. Each county, when it uh, devised the structure of its coalition could determine what they do. So in some counties that is true. I think Clackamas County, for example, does provide individual artist grants. We chose to focus on supporting um, locally based small organizations. 
One of the ways that the Oregon Cultural Trust um, at the state level supports individual artists is through our partnership with the Oregon Arts Commission. So as I mentioned, we have three different buckets of money, and the third bucket goes to our statewide partners, and I listed off the Arts Commission, Oregon Humanities, State Historic Preservation, and so on. Um, and the Oregon Arts Commission has a couple of programs that they, do, they use the Cultural Trust money for directly, and one of those is their Artists Fellowship Program. So in that way, we through our partnership with them, support local artists. And so if somebody in this community, in this circle, um, is an individual artist or has an artist friend and is interested in looking at grant opportunities, I would say to go to OregonArtsCommission.org and check that out. Thank you very much. Chris Leslie, forum member. The forum is a cultural activity, isn't it? Do we get a donation? How it would depend on your mission and how your mission defines you. Yes. Are you a 501c3 nonprofit? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, the coalition has applied, or the forum has applied for a grant, but it was not successful this year. But I would not, I would encourage you to try again. Thank um, the you. other thing I would encourage the forum is to take a look at our list of 1,300 nonprofits and make sure that you're on that list. Um, as a, as a, basically a humanities organization, you would be eligible to be a participating cultural nonprofit. And we have a lot of our donors at the end of the year that start looking for where to donate, and they'll look up Washington County, and, if, if, and they'll see public affairs form, and you might end up getting a few donations that way. Plus, you can let your donors know who you're actively soliciting donations from, that if they give to public affairs form and then match that gift to, a, to the cultural trust, they can get a tax credit. And so so it actually behooves them to give you more money when they do their donation to then get a bigger tax credit. Thank you. The second question is <laughs> Eric's prompting. Uh -oh. But I didn't hear a federal uh, tax credit for charitable donations. Is this included in your presentation? Um, the cultural trust is a state tax credit. However, because we, are, um, we have a tax ID number and as a state um, agency, our, a donation to the cultural trust counts on your federal taxes as a charitable deduction. See, you didn't bring that out. <laughs> that was in that slide where I was oh, rattling wow. off a bunch of information. However, I will point out, and I see someone waving, the, the chart that's in your, um, on your tables, the green one, shows how the federal deduction, the state deduction, and the state tax credit work together for total tax benefit savings. Thank you for that was a good question. A third. <laughs> you mentioned 7% is used for expenses. Is that, uh, so 93% is donations are recycled of the money that you earn. Pretty much, yeah. The 32% is distributed in grants, and then that 58% goes back into the pot. I will add that, I, and I haven't talked about it yet, um, that many of you probably have seen our cultural trust license plates. There's a little coaster also as a visual aid. They're kind of orangey abstract art. A lot of people use them for their vanity plates, so you'll see cool things like mango or popular girl or whatever on their... Uh, um, <laughs> But those license, the, the revenue from license plates um, is, was a couple of years ago, the, legislat the legislat legislative body decided that that would be money that would go directly toward marketing and outreach. And that helped um, um, sub supplement some of the operations of the cultural trust. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Squires, forum member. Uh, I've been outed. I wrote that grant and it failed. And I'd like to thank you for clarifying the fact that grants should not be written in crayon. And that was my mistake. It was orange. It was a lo lovely color. Yeah, you had to read it in, uh, in um, ultraviolet light. to. to uh, and so, uh, so forum folks, I am so sorry. Um, you intercepted my question. That was uh, the cultural plus license pl cultural trust license plates money goes to a separate place. But what I'd like to do is ask if you can uh, uh, share some of the success stories that you've had with um, programs that really have come alive, either in Washington County, Eva, or Kimberly, with statewide programs that have really come alive with this uh, this donation. And then I'd like to ask either of you if you'd like to jump in with a follow up question. I'll ask that now. Can you tell me? 
what future thinking uh, the, f the trust is doing in terms of revenue forecast. Do you think the economy is getting stronger? Um, do you project that the donations are going to get better, stay stagnant, or go down in the future? What are you talking um, I'll have I'll let Eva give a sort of mm. great best, um, best example first. I think one of the, the true, the, the best things about uh, the county-based coalitions is that we can give money to very small organizations. And a little bit of money goes a really long way. And it might be the entire amount they need for a children's summer camp, for example. Um, or they, it really makes a big difference. Um, we also provide grants to larger organizations um, professional organizations such as Broadway Rose Theater or Bag and Baggage Theater. And our little grant of $1,000 or $2,000 isn't very much in their budget, but it pays for a specific program and it's also um, something that they can use as they're trying to catch the big fish grants to show that they have consistent local support. And so our little bits add up to a lot of local support that help them get the $50,000 grant or the, the big prize. And so that's, I think, really important as our organizations continue to grow and become more established in the, in the community. Um, I think the coalition also supports a lot of uh, small things, projects at elementary schools that might not otherwise be funded or um, a variety of, of community events. For example, there's a, a new concert, summer concert series in North Plains, and that the coalition was able to give them a grant last year, which helped them start that um, process. So the community building, um, the neighborhood building kinds of activities, I think, are really important. Um, the cultural development grants are um, very competitive grants. They range from $5,000 to $50,000. Um, and I mentioned some of the larger organizations like Oregon Shakespeare Festival and um, the Bag and Baggage actually has received funding from the cultural development grants. Um, because they're highly visible grants, um, a lot of times they're the they're seen as the sort of the sexy things that people are excited about um, going and participating in. But we have given something you know as, as mundane or as useful, I should say, and practical um, as to exterminate the Baker um, cabins. Um, the Baker Historical Cabin is a is in a, is in a public park, um, and is a, a, they have a friends group, 501c3. They had these little weeble bur bugs that were going to destroy the wood of this historic cabin. They gave a very specific grant grant amount, I think it was like $5,213.25 to get rid of these bugs and they, they're, they're still in business, the bugs are gone. Um, and then we have one that really stands out to me because it was a lovely collaborative project. Portland Youth, uh, Portland Youth Philharmonic is the oldest youth symphony this side of the, actually it's actually the oldest youth symphony in the nation. I was going to say this side of the Mississippi, but it really is. And it started um, over 100 years ago in Harney County in the city of Burns. Um, um, Mary Dodge was a violin teacher who started getting kids together to play the violin and vo viola and then you know cello and other stringed instruments and started the Sagebrush Symphony. And then when she and her husband, because he was an engineer, ended up moving to Portland a few years later. She started what, I can't remember what it was called then, but she started another youth symphony that eventually became the Portland Youth Philharmonic. And a couple of years ago, for that 100th anniversary, the Cultural Trust supported the Portland Youth Philharmonic going back to Burns for an anniversary concert. <laughs> And um, OPB did a story on it, so there's you know collaborations with humanities there. Um, this, the city of, of Burns, the county of Harney County, over 10% of the county showed up for this concert, over 800 people in the high school gym. I happened to have been there. They brought out this huge stage that they had built uh, maybe 10 years ago so that the Oregon Symphony could visit. Um, and the Oregon Symphony stopped visiting, so they set, they, but they still had the stage. The students were up on there. It was a beautiful concert. And, the, and from that, that small investment, the Harney County Arts and Cultural Organization is starting to, to work to build a performing arts center so they can actually have some place for the students to have professional level um, music and theater coming to, to Harney County. And it started over 100 years ago with a, with a violin teacher. Cool. Oh, and the economy. <laughs> the next question about the economy. 
the Eric's question about the economy. Yes. Um, so the economy is the economy, and we just don't know what it's going to do. However, one thing I can say is that over the last 11 years, the cultural trust donations have steadily gone up. The only year that we went down was in 2008, and that was right after the crash, and everyone was panicked, and we didn't really know what we were going to do. The next year, in 2009, even though we were de sinking ever f more fast, quickly into a, a, a depression, like the 1920s, um, we actually saw a slight increase in donations. Um, actually, it was about 5%. No, it was 10% that year. It then went down to more like five, and then last year it kind of evened out to about only a 1% increase. However, what is interesting to me about 2009, when we were still feeling what we were feeling, was that Oregonians said, I can't do a lot. The world is, is crashing in on us. It, the, the economy is not working. What I can do is this little bit, and the cultural trust gives me the opportunity to do this little bit because of this tax credit that gives me that benefit back, that savings back. And so they people were giving. They wanted to give back. They wanted, we're Oregonians. We like to take care of our own. And so we have seen that happen. Um, and I, so I expect we'll continue to see these slight increases. Hopefully we'll see another 10% increase this year. That's my goal, but I'm not gonna tell you the numbers yet because you, know, you never wanna fall too short of your goal in public. Hello, um, am I supposed to move this? Sure. Well, I'll just do this. Um, this is, I'm Georgia Harker. I'm a forum member. And I, one thing I really love about the, cult, the Oregon Cultural Trust is the fact that, like you said, it doesn't just help people in Portland area where there's more money for cultural everything. Uh, it goes all throughout the state. And so money that, you know, uh, if I donate $100, it's going to be spread really throughout the state. And people who would never have theater or... Um, you know, kids' classes or all kinds of visiting artists and residencies and things, they happen, and it, people benefit everywhere, and I love that. Um, and it's also, and yet it has a flavor of that county. For each of the areas that it goes to, people choose what they want, and it, it really has a, a very local flavor. So that's great. Um, I was going to ask you, my question is, can teachers or educators apply for uh, Cultural Coalition grants? Can it yes. be used to help supplement, you know, programs at schools? And that would be a, a place that the Cultural Coalition has wanted to focus on and encourage schools, uh, teachers, parent-teacher organizations, et cetera, to apply for grants to support school-based projects. Oh, um, and we have some, some of those clever teachers who have figured that out and apply year after year and get grants, mm -hmm. but we don't have a broad number of them and we'd love more. Thanks a lot. Thank right. you. Thanks for being here, too. It was very interesting. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Georgia. Oh, I have another question. <laughs> yeah, hi, John Tyner, uh, forum member. The Aloha High School band almost collapsed this year when they had the disconnect with the uh, middle school, and um, the director was resigning, told me not to turn on for band because they'd had five different directors at Aloha. And now, the, now they've got somewhat of a band together. I think there's 60, 65 people. But some of the um, instruments need repair. I think uh, Mr. Walker, who owns a music, music store a few blocks from here, was talking about the condition of the instruments. Um, uh, is it too late to apply for grants for the next school year for the Loa High School? Unfortunately, it is. The grant cycle mm -hmm. just ended. Um, and okay. we're on a calendar year cycle mm -hmm. now. So uh, this month we will distribute funds for use in okay. 214 but it will open again in september okay so um, we're hoping that the september application time is better for schools for actually because they can apply and get the money and do something with it within one school year okay yeah. thank you but i'm going to grab the last question eric squires again would you tell us who rack is and what they do and a follow-up on John Tyner's question, could you tell us about the alignment of the Cultural Coalition of Washington County's grant cycle to RAC and the Oregon Cultural Trust and the recent change that just occurred? Okay, sure. Eric mentioned RAC, and that stands for Regional Arts and Culture Council, which is a tri-county uh, organization um, that supports the arts. Their focus actually is a little narrower than the Cultural Coalition. They're focused on the arts as opposed to heritage, for example. 
um, the Cultural Coalition of Washington County actually um, uses RAC as its fiscal agent. So the money that we get goes to RAC, and RAC administers the funds for us, cuts the checks to the organizations. And we also use, they have an online application process for grants, so we use their application process. So we sort of hire them to do the heavy lifting um, in that sense for us as the local coalition. Um, RAC has a contractual arrangement with the three counties, Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties, and RAC receives some funding directly from the county, Washington County Board of Commissioners um, to uh, distribute grants and do other kinds of things in, for the arts community. And so it's a sister organization um, in many ways. Um, the Cultural Coalition, as you mentioned, just changed its grant cycle, and from 2005 through last June, we had a fiscal year grant cycle. And so we would um, accept applications February through April, distribute grants, and the money would go out the door in June for something to happen between July and June of the next year. We were at the tail end of the funding cycle from the Cultural Trust because we'd have the money from August of the previous year. So by the time we could re report on the results of our grants, we were a year and a half behind the Cultural Trust's grant cycle. So they asked, um, and they had 36 counties on 36 different cycles probably. So smartly they asked us all to try to agree on one <laughs> cycle and we agreed on a, a calendar year basis. So this year we were special and we got to distribute money twice. <laughs> so the coalition distributed funds in June for fiscal 13-14 and this month for calendar 14. So there are uh, some organizations I think that have two grants from us um, that they will use sometime in 2014. Uh, but from this point forward, it will just be a calendar once a year cycle. Does that answer your question? It does perfectly. Thanks, Eric. Any more questions, folks? Then I'm going to call for a round of applause for our amazing speakers. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I grabbed the mic for a quick sure, second. Sure. Hang out up here. Uh, folks, I'd like to uh, conclude today's forum and just uh, do that with a plea. In the, the future months, we're going to have Kevin Howard from Twalton Valley Cable Access appear here. One of the things the forum is doing behind the scenes is a lot of technology improvements. Again, thanks to the Aloha Library, we're recording and broadcasting on YouTube in high definition, and that's a new and a first for the forum. In addition to that, we're also uh, podcasted on the Apple iTunes Store, another first. In the near future, we're going to be streaming the meetings live on the Internet. And these are incrementally some of the things that are happening. What I'd ask that the forum considers is this. When it pertains to our broadcast on local cable access, Comcast is the franchise owner. And my plea to you is this, is that we need to ask Comcast for high definition access. Currently, we're parked on channel 21, which is standard definition. And that I ask that you consider this, is that Comcast borrows our bandwidth, and that it is our bandwidth to give back to Comcast to sell, and that as it pertains to public affairs, that this is a very specific, important purpose. And for events like we've had today, it is something that I think should be shared. And the benefit for the forum is this, is that increased in addition to increased broadcast quality, we would also get what's called bi-directional metrics. We'd actually be able to see how many people are viewing the programs on the digital channels versus the analog channels, which don't remit information back from the set-top boxes that decode the digital signal. Thank you for enduring that horrible techno babble. But it is something that I, we work so hard to put a television show on here and that what we'd like to do is have the people who spend their hard-earned time and their energies to come and bring us an important message to be represented in the best technological way. So I'd like to uh, close the forum with one last ask. Now would you please give our speakers one last round of applause. Thank you. We're done, folks.